Well, hello again. So we're continuing our reading of Is Our Gain Also Our Loss? I'm going to go ahead and start out by rereading what we have read so far. And you will notice that the text is here on the screen. Let's see if I can move me up here real quick. Okay. Never mind the ads. So, is our gain also our loss? When I was your age, I had to wait for the hourly report on TV in order to get the information that you have right at your fingertips. That's the problem with the world today. It was the summer of 2012, and I was standing in the kitchen with my dad and sister, holding my iPhone a towel and bathing suit thrown over my shoulder. I had just finished reading aloud the full day weather report and, until my dad spoke, had nothing on my mind but the gleaming pool water that seemed to be calling my name. I waited for a moment for his comment to process, then looked down at my phone, analyzing it in a way that I never had, had never before feeling the cold, hard metal in my palm and the smooth, sleek screen underneath my thumb. I asked Dad to elaborate on his comment. When I was a young boy, we had a pool in our backyard. My brothers and I weren't allowed to go swimming until the temperature reached 75 degrees, not one degree less. And so us boys spent our summer mornings waiting by the TV for the hourly report that read the temperature, praying that it would say the number we wanted it to say that we could so that we could dive in. I have vivid memories of those mornings. By the way, I love that use of the word vivid. I love this idea of vivid because it makes us think that you've got very clear pictures, very detailed memories of those mornings. I like that. I like the use of the word vivid. Okay, continuing. Suddenly, life in the 1970s seemed distant and people detached. It occurred to me that my dad has experienced life like I will never know it and that I have experienced life like my children will never know. I even started to think about how things have changed in the years that I've been alive. It's not just technology that's changing, either. It's our way of living. I've seen it with my own eyes, and it's only becoming clearer as the years go by. Okay, so we've read to there so far, so that was review. So now I'm going to start this next paragraph. So I'm beginning right here with gradually. Gradually, evenings spent doing homework at a lamp-lit desk covered in pencils, paper, and textbooks are turning into late nights under the bed sheets and blankets. A Google, Google Docs page pulled up, fingers typing aggressively on a keyboard that can barely be seen in the dark. It seems as though I am part of the last generation that will know the satisfied feeling of stapling together a completed research paper, pages still warm from the printer. People in the next generation will never go on a family trip to local Blockbuster in search of candy and a comedy for movie night. They might miss out on handwritten letters from their grandparents, available to read and reread for years. Do we even realize what we're leaving behind? Okay, this paragraph brings a lot of thoughts to me because this, these desks covered with books and all that stuff, that was me. That's how I studied. And this under the covers with Google Docs, well, in many cases, this is how you study. So it appears that we have had a difference. And so what this writer is kind of asking us to think about is, how's the next generation going to do it. Okay, next paragraph. 
This morning, I was sitting at the breakfast table eating cereal when my dad came in to say goodbye before he left for work. When he saw that I was eating life cereal, a huge smile crept across his face, and he started excitedly reciting a commercial that he remembered from his childhood. He called me into his office, where he threw himself down in front of the desk computer to search for the ad on YouTube, eager to take me back with him. I know I do this to my students all the time. Next paragraph. Watching the commercial, my modernly adjusted ears pick up, picked up on a faint hum in the background of the actors' voices. There were no sap, snappy graphics or fast-paced cuts. In fact, the colors were a bit faded and the actors' faces were only highlighted in dim lighting. Then I turned to my dad, who was still beaming, as if all the happy memories from his childhood were flashing before his eyes. Judging by his enthusiastic clapping at the end, he sure didn't seem to miss modern technology during those 30 seconds. In a world of iPhones and missions to Mars, is it even possible that my childhood will ever be looked at in the way that I look at my dad's? By then, will our TV shows be even crisper? Will it be unimaginable that we needed long, easily tangled wires in our ears in order to listen to music? Hey, I think of that line right there. and I already have, what are those things, those pods or whatever the students wear? Yeah, wireless headphones. Okay, continuing. Will my kids marvel at the idea of us old-fashioned teenagers having to wait by wall outlets for our phones to get out of the dreaded red battery zone before heading out for the night? Will they laugh at us for using pieces of green paper to buy things? <laughs> Will they replace money? Paragraph. The thing that has really stayed with me, though, is my dad's comment on how all these new technologies are a problem. One day, will us late millennials feel nostalgic as we look back on our simpler days, where we sometimes got a 10-minute homework break when our laptops lost battery, giving us an excuse to sit in peace in front of a warm fire while we waited for them to charge? Will the lack of instant charging mechanisms become the new lack of weather.com app? Will we pull out our old Nintendo 3DS XLs to smile at what was once the hottest new piece of technology, recalling memories of online play with friends in the same way that my dad smiled at an old commercial? Will we wish that we things had never changed? They say that you should never try to fix what's not broken. Does the charm of the way things are now trump the need for things that are fresher, newer, and more advanced? Will we ever reach a point where there is no possible way to make any more improvements? And does this possibly inevitable peak signal impending doom on our continuation of tradition? In my last period sociology class the other day, the teacher ended off a class discussion on, changing, on the changing technology's impact on society with a statement that summarized my thoughts on the matter and left me with something, something to think about. I don't know how new technology will affect future generations, and I don't know if it will do more good than bad. I couldn't have said it better myself. Now, one of the things that we are looking at here is this idea of central idea or theme. And this is one where I think we have it stated at the end. I really feel like this quote she used from her sociology teacher right there does a really good job of telling us what the central idea might be. 
Okay. Well, stay tuned. I'll throw some assignments up related to this. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in.